there, there was one dude that actually said um, he got divorced from his wife. I think he had four kids with her. He got divorced from her, and the denomination told him to sit out for a year. Okay. I think he sat down for like maybe two and a half months. Okay. And then um, he was back preaching. Had to leave the whole denomination, abandon the church, go start a whole other church and all that kind of stuff. And um, they were like, what are you doing? And he was like, um, uh, God called me to preach. He didn't call me to be married. That's interesting. I'm going to sip the remaining <laughs> chai out of this I just, I just... cup while I pontificate upon the fact that this guy had a calling to ministry, not marriage. And that's why he was back in the pulpit, but he was already remarried mm. to the side chick oh. while the ink was still drying on the divorce decree. You know something I've been thinking about when I hear stories like that? When I was reading, I have to record uh, the Bible for this um audio Bible project I'm a part of. So I've been reading through the entire Bible, hence why I was in Ezekiel. (laughs) There it is. (laughs) And I put a, you know, a footnote. I was like, I got to come back to this. And uh, reading at reading Old Testament books at a time um, really gives you a big sense of Israel's history. You know, and so reading through first and second Kings, reading through first and second Chronicles, reading through uh, the major minor prophets. And I was, uh, it's really saying kind of the same stuff over and over. Hey, I, I didn't, you know, gave y'all this land and this heritage and got my name on y'all and my glory is here. <laughs> but y'all keep messing with the nation's idols. Y'all keep doing it. I'm going to ship y'all off. He ships them off. Yep. He sends the prophets to say God, you know, all yep. stuff. And I asked the question, I said, Lord, in Old Testament, you know, the way you judged the nation of Israel was by uh, allowing them to be taken over by Babylon or another nation, right? But it's like, how how are you doing that now? Mm. Right? Mm. Like, um, Americans are not going to be given to another nation. And what I'm thinking is that we'll just be given over. Because Romans 1, what happens when we continue to worship idols? He gives us over to a debased mind Facts. to do what, not all, what ought not be to do what ought not to be done. Right. And that seems worse. It is worse. Than being given over to a nation because now you're given over to a state of mind that feels right. Absolutely correct. And that scares the mess out of me. Well, um, I'm horrified. If you're scared, I'm horrified because at least if I was given over to another nation while in bondage, I would recall my freedom mm-hmm. and long for it. Mm-hmm. I, my soul would long for the restoration of not only my freedom, but to worship my God. Yep. I shudder at the thought that I would get up from this chair and think every thought that I have thereafter is correct. Mm-hmm. That's scary. <laughs> what? I want no parts of that. Yeah. That's frightening. Yeah. Um. I do see that. I see that with this nation right now. Uh-huh. Um, and I feel like evangelicals would say that they are trying to be the conscious to, to counter. And I would go on to say that they are a large part of the perpetuation of all of it. Yeah. I don't even want to go there. Because <laughs> loving babies is awesome. Just go there then. Because if you start with that, then you. <laughs> we should love babies. We should. <laughs> they, they are beautiful beings. So cute. Made in the image of God. Absolutely. Supple and soft. Half, adorable sinners is what they bald, are bald yeah yeah you know yeah. <laughs> fully depraved but cute absolutely but we gotta love people too right and a part of loving people is also making policies that ensure that people will live not just babies but children in schools absolutely and correct. what's messing that up guns right so it, it's just so many things yeah 
No, whatever. The 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 we're, um, we're addicted to violence in America. We 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 adore it. Yeah, that's how it started. That demon ain't went away. It's still very much here. <laughs> this is a possessed nation, and I don't I don't really I don't I don't know why we don't see that. But who am I? Where you go? <laughs> I, I that I had to pause because we're at a point in our culture where we can't make a statement without it being politicized, mm-hmm. without it being categorized. Yeah. Well, you must be left or right. You must be centrist. You must be uh, independent. You must be pro this or uh, against that and when you or, or, or this is critical race theory this is um you, you, you know the reimagining of a, of american history i just don't know where our all of our revisionist history comes from a- again if 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 america's narrative was as um transparent as the bible's mm. Mm. then we'd all be good. Mm -hmm. Like four score and seven years ago Mm -hmm. and this happened. Like, you know what I mean? But to that point, we, violence is in the, 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 is in the bone marrow. Yeah. Of America. Yeah. You you don't come to a new land and survive Mm -hmm. without fighting. Mm Mm-hmm. Just say that. Yeah. But let's not act like we have been the diplomats of diplomacy, mm-hmm. the, the 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 curators of refined culture. Yeah. Right? That we came to this nation like this. Mm-hmm. The founders of this nation. We're just gonna negotiate our way into all of this land. Mm-hmm. No, y'all, y'all, y'all was some gangsters. No, it was intense. It was very, very intense. Yeah. It was very, very graphic. It was very, very bloody. It was th- th- that's been seen throughout history. Yeah. We're the only ones that wanna. Yeah, that's why I, I went to Rwanda a couple years ago, and I that was a really moving experience because you know the Rwandan genocide. Uh, what was that? Ninety seven, I think, or ninety four. Mm-hmm. I can't watch that movie. Like, like you know, they made even a movie. The, even the movie was incorrect. Yeah, I can't. I didn't watch it. I still got the plastic on it. it. It's it's like I think two million Rwandans were murdered in about a hundred days, right? But what was significant is that we were having conversations with pastors and people. One, it's almost impossible to have a conversation with anybody in Rwanda who hasn't lost a family member. Like, imagine everybody you meet has grieved in some way, like there, there's this collective sorrow. Um, but they, they talked about how their nation has healed so much because of the, the gen- genocide between the, the Hutus and the Tutsis. And it's because they were honest. The reconciliation happened because they were honest about all of the things that led up to it, right? God. And so I, I think not having honesty, confession, clarity, yes. there, I, I think so much of the critical race theory conversation and all, all of the re, re, revisionist history is, you know, you, we have an a, a, a enemy who is a slanderer, who is a liar, right. and he's keeping us from authentic reconciliation right. by not allowing people to want to be okay with yep. telling the truth yeah, yeah, yeah. about this nation. Yep. So even this can become a clip about, oh, look at her. Da, da, da. It's just like, man, what yeah. if this was an opportunity to repent? Maybe. Like like for real repent. Legitimately. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we can have peace. Yeah, 